Hey, Jack, what's going on? Uh, Ma'am, I'm a little bit concerned about this patient's heart rate. It's running around 140. This is uh, Paul Shockley. He goes by Tiny. Hi, Mr. Shockley. Uh, he has a, a right, he was in a motor vehicle crash a couple days ago. Oh. He has a right rib fracture, right liver laceration, a light, and, a, and a right tib fracture as well. Okay. Um, not hey. having the best time. Hey, Mr. Shockley, I'm Dr. Clay. How are you doing? Mr. Shockley? Has he been more responsive? No, this is new, ma'am. Uh, okay. he, he's been at least responsible to this point. Okay. Oh, well, he is tachycardic, and he's a little bit uh, unresponsive. That makes me worried. Why don't we check a, a glucose? Yes, ma'am. And um, grab some Narcan, um, and I'll examine him. And he has had a lot of photos. pain, ma'am. He has. Okay. Yes, well, let me check. start checking his blood pressure here. I'll get a oxygen saturation. Going. Take a listen. Mr. Shockley, I'm just going to take a look in your eyes here. Press sounds. Oh, and he's really tachycardic. Google is back, man. It's around 112. 112, okay. And his blood pressure is. Um, 90 over 45. Do you know what it runs? Uh, regularly about 100, I think his baseline was 150 over 80. Oh yeah, and his SAT is, his SAT is pretty good. It's a 92%, so that's, that's pretty good. Um, well, I, I'm really concerned that this patient is in shock. I mean, his mental status has changed. I don't think we need to give him Narcan. His pupils are dilated and he's breathing pretty fast. But I do think maybe we should uh, temporize with some fluids, if you can get 500 of fluid. Yes, ma'am. And then maybe call an RRT. You got it. Hey, Dr. Knudsen, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm, I'm concerned this patient is in shock. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 60-year-old gentleman with a motor vehicle collision four days ago, uh, five days ago, I guess. Uh, came in with a right pneumothorax, a liver laceration, and a tib-fib fracture. Been getting a lot of pain medication, and the nurse called me for a rapid heart rate. Mm -hmm. Also, his mental status is uh, down, and so with his heart rate up, his respiratory rate up, and his mental status, I just was really worried that he's in shock. Okay. Do you have any vitals on him? Um, I do. His blood pressure is 90 over 45. His heart rate is in the 130s. That's also changed. Okay. His respiratory rate is 24, and his SAT's 92%. Okay. So why don't we start? Jack, can you get us some oxygen? Let's put him on, like, 4 liters nasal cannula. And with his altered mental status, Mr. Shockley, let's make sure he's got a, a gag. Yes, ma'am. All right. And then uh, other things, you said his blood pressure is 92 over 45. What's his baseline? His baseline is on the 150s. So okay. I, I did order, have Jack hang some fluids for us. <coughs> okay. Jack, what kind of access does he have? He has an 18 gauge, ma'am. Okay. So, okay for now, if we need to give pressers or something, if he's not volume responsive, okay. then we may need a central line. But okay. that's, that'll work for right now. So, Allison, since it's your first month, I wanted to say, usually if I have somebody in shock, the first thing I do is I put my hand on their feet okay. and see if they're warm or cold, because okay. that really helps me think about what type of shock it might be. Mm -hmm. And his extremities are very cold here. Mm -hmm. I'm to make sure that it's not just a problem with this broken leg. Mm -hmm. It's actually both extremities are okay. cold up to his knee. So, yeah, um, I mean, maybe he's bleeding. He did have that liver laceration. I, um, I can send off a CBC. That would be great. So what else do you think of when somebody's got cold extremities? What type of shock is that? Um, well, it could be cardiogenic, too. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we haven't noticed any problem with his heart. Okay. Um, I, th I, th I mean, really, I'm thinking, like, hypovolemia and hemorrhage, number one, um, and then maybe cardiogenic. Uh, number two, those are the, like, the top of my list when someone's cold. I think that's a great differential. And the most important thing is to temporize with fluid while you sort it out. So really nice job. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you always want to think about is what type of injuries they have. Could there be something else? So it might just be plain old hypovolemia from okay. under resuscitation, maybe not eating well and things. Okay. But with the altered mental status and the breathing fast and then just with some abdominal injury, I always worry could there be some type of a a bowel injury, like ischemia or perforation that potentially we've missed. Does his abdomen seem more distended to you? 
Uh, this is my first day with him, so Got I don't it. really know. Got it. Okay. Obviously, he's not really awake enough to tell us if he's tender. But in that case, I'd be worried about sepsis. Okay. So what do you know about sepsis? What do we do, need to do right away? Oh, well, we need antibiotics. So Great. Um, I, like, what do you think, like, just some bank and sosin? That sounds great. He's been in the hospital more than 48 hours, so we need to cover for MRSA and pseudomonas. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you know if he has any allergies? Oh, he does. He has a penicillin allergy. Okay. So maybe I could do septaz and estrinian. So, or ceftaz or estrinium with the name. Yeah, so ceftaz maybe, if it's just a rash, there's only about a 10 to 15% cross-reactivity, but if there's a more significant reaction, we'll just do estrinium flagell, since we don't know and can't ask him. Yeah. Let's I'll, just do I'll, I'll I'll estrinium and flagell. Anaphylaxis too. Okay. Okay, so That's, I'll go order the bank and um, estrinium and flagell uh -huh. and call his wife. Do you think he can stay here on the floor? You know, it uh, looks like our fluid bolus is about half done. Why don't we uh, recycle the blood pressure cuff? Okay. And if it's not getting better, I'm really concerned and think okay. we need to move to the intensive care unit. All right, I'll get that going here. I'm just going to kind of borrow your stethoscope. I yeah. left mine in the unit. I ran out so fast. Thank yeah. you. The other thing, obviously, we'd worry about would be, you know, could he have a pneumothorax? Uh, I has it expanded? Or? Yeah, I heard breast sounds, and I checked his chest tubes to suction. Right. I don't see any tracheal deviation. Uh, I hear good bilateral breath sounds. We can always put an ultrasound on it if we're concerned. Okay. But I think with his saturations up to 98 with the nasal cannula, that's okay. pretty low on my list. Yeah, let me check his blood pressure. Yeah, it's still low. Okay. Uh, even with that fluid. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move him to the intensive care unit. And okay. Nice job, Allison. All right.